This is episode six of Rush Hour. I'm joined here by Drew the Commission Carter and Kyle Kinneman, our NHL insider. Get to that in a little bit. We're gonna start off with Deflate Gate. Right. Probably the biggest story in the sports world right now. Yes, it is true. <sighs> okay. How do you guys feel about it? Um I disagree with it. Um the suspension. Yes, that this is with the suspension, in my opinion. What do you think he should have gotten? Two games? Um, two games for sure. I mean, if if they truly believe that Brady was involved in this, I mean, the Ted Wells report, it's so cloudy right now. I mean, half of those pages were uh, just unexplained scientific lingo Garbage, that yeah. no one understands. Um, so if, you, if they truly do find something, two games at max, mm-hmm. um, the million dollars I can understand, the draft picks, they don't even hurt them because the Patriots, they still find a way to... Uh, Find get an advantage in the draft, and they always do so well. And Bill Belichick is just a master with any player that he gets. Yeah, I mean, I actually, I actually disagree with that. I think the draft pick is more impactful than the four games for Brady because the Patriots. I think we'll all agree that they'll still make the playoffs this for year, sure. mm-hmm. but a draft pick is gonna up, up, like impact them for maybe a decade because you never know who who they can draft. So I think that's one reason Bill Belichick being so good at drafting is one reason that the draft pick hurts them a lot. So it kind of sucks for them that they lost that. I agree with you. I think it should have been two games. I, I also, I one that thinks it's four. It it's, seems yeah, like we'll it, get uh, to you in a minute. Honestly, I think <laughs> the reason it was four was because Roger Goodell has to he has to bring back his reputation that has been tarnished as of recent and and rightfully so. Yes, and I don't want to bring race into this, but. If he didn't give Brady that initial four-game suspension, he's going to be called a racist and along those lines because they've been wearing the the NFL and Roger Goodell have been wearing the black hat for quite some time now with the um, string of suspensions down the line, and now he looks like this white knight that he finally gives out a a good suspension, but it's it's not correct in my book. I I don't know. I'm not going to call him a racist. No, I'm not calling him a racist. I'm just saying the other remarks people would have been there. Yeah, there would be yeah. racist remarks. Right. Right, and I mean, with how inept he's been over his tenure as commissioner, it wouldn't surprise me if a bunch of people did call him racist, because at this point, there's basically no criticism of him that you can say that hasn't already been said, because he's just a buffoon. (laughs) It's, you know, Terrell Pryor, he received those five-game suspension when, right when he got into the league for getting tattoos in college, and here you have Tom Brady, who is taking away from the... uh, Taking integrity. Away integrity of the game, and that's, he receives four games. That's quotes right there. Integrity of the game. It's just, it's mind-boggling what goes on in the mind of this man. He sits and makes these owners millions, if not billions of dollars every season, while he's getting paid $40 million himself for right. doing what? Absolutely nothing that well, anyone agrees with. His entire job description at this point is pretty much just take all the public beating that comes from these decisions and just deflect it all from the owners because everyone should really be crapping on the owners. They're terrible people themselves. And Roger Goodell just takes all the flack publicly from the media. And I don't know. I, I just have nothing more to say about Roger Goodell. So He's long overstayed. Their, their, their whole suspension thing is completely arbitrary. All Goodell does is just gauge public opinion and then he makes a suspension. We can... Everyone, it's obvious that the Ray Rice suspension was uh, half as long as this one, which is ridiculous and absurd. Mm-hmm. And you can't he's compare terrible. the two. Why not? There's two different rule sets there, completely, for the suspensions. Un- not until the public opinion was terrible for Roger Goodell after he had the two game suspension, then they instituted the new public personal conduct policy or whatever. But the two game suspension at the time, from a quoting what he said that the evidence they had I think they had the film and whatnot but I'm from saying from day what, one yeah yeah I'm just saying what they said was the two games and then they made that one longer off of double jeopardy which is not right either so but, does it make it better that he maybe lied about ha- not having the evidence or just didn't try to get the evidence or in the first place had a terrible policy does that make it better I, no I'm not a fan of Roger Goodell at all but you can compare the suspensions because he gave both of them yeah, I know. And he's basically saying the integrity of the game, which is stupid to begin with. It was we're arguing over PSIs here. He's saying the integrity of the game is more important than domestic violence. I don't know if you can say that, but I get what you're saying. I w- I don't know if I don't know. From I think it's just different perspectives on like what 
he's feeling the same, the integrity of the game, the domestic violence. One's with the game, so it's like the integrity and it's cheating, mm-hmm. and the one is off the field issues, which I don't agree with the off the field, but I'm still thinking like, yeah, this one had to do with in-game, right. so I, it kind of hurts the integrity more. I understand where you're coming from with that, but here's the thing. Josh Gordon got an entire season for smoking weed. That's ridiculous. I so is that is that on the field or off the field? We're going to say it's off the field. So if he's going to hand down a suspension like that for something off the field, you have to you have to give equal suspensions for on the field and off the field stuff, I think. And we we can all agree that Roger Goodell is terrible. But in this case specifically, Kyle, I know you have a different opinion than us two. Yeah, I think uh, Brady got what he deserved. Four games was the right amount for him. Uh, the re- him and the Patriots are repeat offenders of cheating. <laughs> uh, good <Thank> God. <laughs> Say it. Go. I personally believe that the Patriots don't cheat any more than any other teams. And they just got caught in 07 for Spygate, and they got caught in 04. 2015, or 04, whatever. Um, and it's they get all this publicity for it because they're the Patriots yes, and they're thank you, the because best. They are I mean, it also happens Patriots. that every time they've cheated and got caught, they've won the Super Bowl, which also, I'm not saying that's why they won the Super Bowl. I'm just saying that's why public media gets I mean, it. they still had to go out and beat arguably the best team in the league in the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, in that game, and they won the Colts game forty-five to seven. And the Colts they did are using different balls, weren't they? Well, <laughs> but still, they they yeah. won forty-five to seven. Like Garrett these Blunt, game balls. Garrett Blunt had two hundred yards and four touchdowns, and that's running the ball. I don't think having a ball deflated affects how you do it on the ground. Honestly, they they would have won the Super Bowl without deflating the balls. I think. Uh yeah, I mean, but you don't. It's hard to say that, but yeah. And uh, right, here's a solution. How about the NFL provides the balls? Don't let the home team provide the own balls. In every other sport, baseball, hockey, and basketball, the, the league provides the ball or puck. Yeah. So why doesn't the NFL, they have billions of dollars mm-hmm. to just... I mean, and this it's is, and this is the thing about Goodell. He's so reactive instead of being proactive. Exactly. Just go ahead and change the rule in the first place so you don't have problems like this at all. Well, the thing is, like... Another reason I think Brady got what he deserved is because he denies that he knew there was a rule about yeah. this until, well, until a year ago. But in 2006 or 8, I think it was 6, um, he was the leader in making a rule change about the PSI of the footballs and co- how quarterbacks should be able to change it for the away team. Mm-hmm. And then he claims six years later he knows nothing about right. it. Right, that's, that's the thing. Like, his... His whole playing dumb charade, and that especially he, that that one, and his press agents conference. even worse. Yeah, that that was part of it. But personally, I don't agree with with that being uh, a part of the ruling because you just said it. It's because the four games is because of what happened on the field. So why are we punishing him for saying for like lying about what happened on the field? You kind of understand. I, the, I'm not saying that to like. Justify the suspension. I'm I think, saying as a fan, knowing yeah. that he's denying that, I feel better that he got a four game. I so, know that it has nothing to do with. So the, you're kind of offended that he would play dumb. When play dumb about it. Like just own up to it. Like all the like. So I'm gonna bring baseball into this kind of. But like, if you own up to cheating mm-hmm. or something, you get a lot of respect back. You still lose respect, but it's not the Barry Bonds that's denying it, and all these other players like with PEDs and Alex yeah. Rodriguez. If you accept it and you look at the people that have accepted it mm-hmm. in the past. They've got uh, been a lot more welcomed back by the fans. Yeah. So I feel like if Brady would have just been like, "Yeah, I did it." I don't mm-hmm. know. It took Ryan Braun and Alex Rodriguez quite some time to get back into the public eye. And because they didn't, didn't. Because they, they denied, denied it. it. I'm first. saying if you well, yeah. own up to it. Right. Oh, you own bef- up before. If, if you get caught and you okay. own up and say, "I did it," the public be like, "Wow, that guy actually has the respect back." For yeah. Owning up for it. Yeah, and I agree with you. I would have more respect for Brady if he had owned up to it in the first place, but I don't think it should play a role in the suspension that he gets, and I think it did in this case, in the report, I think it's Okay, that. so if Brady comes out right away and says, I was just trying to make the balls the way I like them like within the grounds of the rules of the league, I didn't know this was a rule, does he... He knows it was a rule. He tried well, to okay, just if rule. he says that... he. Does he still get a four game, or does he just get a two game off? The I, I think it's two games. I think he's off two. Which I think is absurd. Why? Why is that? <laughs> I Roger Roger Goodell for you. I couldn't tell you, but and part of it, part of it, it kind of goes along with that is that he didn't turn over his phone to the to Ted Wells for the investigation. Uh, excuse the guy for not wanting to give over his personal phone. In, in this day and age, with the, with all the media and social media and stuff, you know something would get leaked from his phone. So, 
excuse him for not wanting to turn that over. Like, I, I don't think he's not cooperating with the investigation. Did he eventually give up his phone? No, I don't think he did. Okay, so they got the text messages from I, the equipment managers, I assume? I, I would assume so, yeah. Okay. Something. why would either of them still have those messages? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, think about your like, hey, I cheating. Text, hey, let's keep our out, text I texted, messages. I texted Tom Brady. How cool is that? <laughs> All right. Is that enough about Deflategate, or you got any last words here, Austin? I don't know. I'm... The more and more this this is far from over in my opinion. Um, well, yeah, there's still more that. evidence that is coming out that shows Brady could very well not not have even been involved. He is involved. Don't. He's well, involved. it's not. What I'm trying to say is that he didn't explicitly go to these ball boys, text them, and say he did. Hey. There's text messages showing it, and then there's text messages between the two equipment managers saying "F Tom, I'm gonna put it at 11.5 <laughs> instead of 14 or whatever the PSIs were." Yeah. Like there's text messages between those two not using code words like Brady had saying "I want a watermelon" or whatever it was. That <laughs> right. Rugby. Right. That's, was it? <laughs> I, I don't even know. But the thing, my thing is, he yes, he did that, and I'll agree that he did do it, and all the evidence points to him doing it. I just don't think it's that big of a deal. I don't think it's worth four games. And if it was a twenty-four to twenty-one victory of the Patriots, then we can talk. Yeah, but the, I've heard it was that a forty-five was against the forty-five Ravens. to seven victory. Like when it was against the Ravens a couple years before, you know, when it came down to the field goal, Billy Cundiff missed it. Yeah, yeah. like if it was that type of game, I think it would have been a much more justifiable suspension, maybe for the public to look at for there, a four game. Right. Well, I don't know. Billy Cundiff should have missed thirty-yard field goal in the National Football League, well, but, but the, you know, the point is, yeah, but, <laughs> different argument. Yeah. That, but that's doing? that's kind of the thing that worries you. Like you don't, you really don't know what all, what else is these guys are doing. I mean, and they say it was only for one, like, they got caught for the AFC Championship game. Yeah. This has ha- probably happened for yeah. a long time. Yeah, that's the that's the worrisome thing. But wh- what I'm saying is I think every team does stuff like this. Oh, they so, do. So Vikings and Falcons were pumping in right. uh, crowd yeah. rounds yeah. with the texting on the sideline. Mm-hmm. The Browns got a $250,000 fine for that, and the Patriots get a $1 million fine? Like, how, how does that add up? Okay. I'd say it might be four times as worse as texting. Plus, plus the draft picks, plus the four game suspension for your franchise. I think altogether it's probably a bit much, but yeah. I think they should have just done either like a fine in Brady, and no draft picks, or one or two game suspension for Brady, draft picks, and a less fine. Like yeah, all three together, it was kind of over the top. But they're right. trying to get their integrity back, as you were mentioning before. And then it's and then it's probably going to end up getting cut in half maybe with the appeal and then we're all going to look back on it differently but it's just going to be Roger Goodell gauging the public opinion once again and um, and changing his his ruling like he does every time. I think no matter what Goodell does, people aren't going to like it. That's, that's I mean, like so he, true. He under suspends someone. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, that's nothing. He overdoes it in this case by two games. Yeah. Like, oh, pretty four games. It's like, Patriots, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Your team's still amazing. Mm-hmm. I think for four games you'll be okay. Yeah, I yeah. But they'll probably go two and two or three and one during that. I bet. Yeah, I, I think they're gonna go two and two, uh, and they'll be they'll be fine. They'll <laughs> come back, they'll come back and probably win that division. So mm, that's another argument. I'd say <laughs> they got the run for their money this year. But well, from the the Bills, the Jets, Dolphins. I think just all together, it's not gonna be such a separation this year. Yeah, I, I don't I think agree. it's gonna be a thirteen and three Patriots. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of them fighting for seven and nine. Right. Yeah. All those teams had huge off seasons. Mm-hmm. So. I think the Bills will be better in the next two years, and yeah, Dolphins agree. and Jets. Jets' mm. d- defense is incredible oh, now. Oh my gosh! So. Especially with Leonard Williams. Wow. Yes. That's gonna be scary. <laughs> the uh, Patriots' first four games are Pittsburgh, then they go to Buffalo, Jacksonville have a bye week, and then they are in Dallas. So right. Yeah. That could be two and two. It could be and, four and zero. Oh, and three I'm, and one. I'm glad you brought that up because. Um, a lot of people are going to be outraged over Goodell hearing the appeal when he was the guy who issued the suspension. And I actually don't have a problem with it because I don't personally believe that Roger Goodell wants what's worst for the league, you know? Like, I don't think he wants Brady to be suspended longer. Mm-mm. So, because what would be best for the league is if Brady was playing in that uh, season opener against Pittsburgh. So, I don't think I don't think Roger Goodell is looking at this from a lens like, I want to kill Tom Brady because... He's he's the face of the league. I think it would help. Yeah, and I just I want to say one more thing, and then we can wrap this up. But this is going to be forgotten in two years. This Tom Brady is an obvious Hall of Famer. There's not going to be any asterisk by his name. 
once he's in the book. No one is going to remember this after his career. I actually disagree with you. I well, think people I, are going to remember a lot of this. If he retires in the Tom next Brady two years... Tom he's got four Super Bowls. No, no, he's, no. If He's the best quarterback, if not top two, to ever play the game. No. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. In my opinion, he's, I he's don't a, think anyone's really going to remember this, and it's I, just going to blow over. As no, soon here's, as why, as here's why I disagree with you. Spygate happened a decade ago, and people still bring it up. And now this happens, and both of those were so huge uh, but public... I agree with that, but I can also see where Austin's coming yeah. from, because you look at uh, Ben Roethlisberger... He got a four-game suspension for raping a woman in a bathroom, and uh-huh. everyone allegedly, is forgotten. Allegedly. Allegedly. I, allegedly. Has everyone forgotten it, though? I don't but think so. First thing you think of when you see uh, Patriots Pittsburgh on Monday night, you're not going to remember Big Ben raped someone. No, no, Allegedly, no, no. sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> you no, don't I, I, I understand that. How people I kind think, of forget those things right, until I you think realize it. Smart, I think smart NFL fans like us, yeah, I think we're pretty smart. I think we won't think of that. We won't think of cheating when we think of these Patriots, mm-hmm. this dynasty. I think some people will. Some people definitely will. Some people will never be able to let go of it, but at the end of the day, Tom Brady is a top three quarterback to ever play the game. Yeah. And it's just not going to tarnish his image once he's all done. I mean, you... For, yeah, for me it doesn't. For other people it might. Yeah. They can be mad at Tom Brady all they want. Yeah. I mean, you also look at the first four games they play, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Jacksonville, and Dallas. Except for Dallas, really, none of those are major games that he's going to be missing for the NFL. So like you said, Roger Goodell wants best for the NFL. The four-game suspension, you look at who they're playing. No, it, are you kidding me? The first game is the season opener against yeah, but You look at who's out in that game already on both teams. Right. How bad of a picture is that for the league when the when the Steelers' best running back, Le'Veon Bell, who's one of the best offensive players in the league, he's out for smoking weed, and then the opposing <laughs> team's best player, Tom Brady, is out because he's messing with footballs. How bad is that for the league? I'm just saying, in general, if, this were, if they were playing the Jets... Uh, Denver or some of these more team, uh, higher up teams that have rivalries with the Patriots, it'd be much worse. They're kind of getting by. They're playing Jacksonville, at Buffalo. I know the ja- the like, Jacksonville game probably doesn't matter. But yeah, I think the Pittsburgh game is huge. And Time for Jimmy Garoppolo. If it wasn't shot. Monday night, I think you yeah. could get away with it. But since it's the Monday night game, because they were going to be the defending champions mm-hmm. on Monday night. That's going to be. Really interesting that first game. Are they it's a Thursday the night game? By the yeah, way, it's not Monday. Oh, it's Thursday. It's Thursday. Yeah, this season. So. Are they uh, doing the banner? Or are they waiting until Brady comes back? The Super Bowl. I don't. I think I don't, they should wait till he comes back. I know there's that hashtag. Going just around. in spite Goodell. Do they? Do they even do banners? Well, not banners, but they have the ceremony. So yeah, I was yeah, thinking yeah, hockey I mean, yeah. and basketball. You know what I mean? And the ceremony. No, probably the ring ceremony or whatever it is. Yeah. So we'll see. I'm I'm actually super interested. I might even be more inclined to watch that game now if I were a casual NFL fan. Well, if they did it, they'd have to wait. Hey, until who knows? We could still play that game. We got a long time until do. September 10th. We do. They'd have to wait until October 25th to do it against the Jets because that's yeah. the next home game after the suspension. Yeah. So I don't know. Should they wait that long or do you just kind of do it? I don't know. Well, I'm really excited to see what happens. I think part of the public opinion comes from Bill Belichick being so, like. Uh, unfriendly to the media it kind of gives the patriots that portrayal of being like the the death star kind of like the evil empire <laughs> you know they're so good but they yeah. had these mishaps. and they're so secretive you know mm-hmm. and they're yeah i think that's part of it probably i'd act opinion. the same way if i were bill belichick four super bowl rings and, like i don't have time for you people. yeah who cares about the media <laughs> all right i'm gonna move on to some NBA, which was an amazing night last night. Thank you to the Rockets and Clippers. Mainly, I'm sorry, mainly just Josh Smith. <laughs> Jay oh, my Lord. Jay Smooth, what got into that guy? I had so much fun watching this basketball game last night. I don't remember the last time I had that much fun watching the game on TV. It was incredible. I, I enjoyed that game so much. And this is a Rockets team who just lost back-to-back games by 25. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, what got into these boys? It was an absolute shock to see them because it in the first in the first uh, couple games of this series, it had seemed like they didn't even want to be there. No, exactly. They lost the first game when the Clippers didn't have Chris Paul, and then they got blown out in both games in L.A. Game Chris Paul didn't play game two either, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and <laughs> it was just it was just amazing to see this team show so much heart, especially in that fourth quarter. I don't know. I don't know where it came from. Guy, yeah, I know you love saying guys who don't play with heart. <laughs> and Josh Smith is a guy who you can make an argument who hasn't played with heart for the last couple of seasons. That's yeah, why he, he left Detroit, or he, they let him go. And he's Josh Smith has basically been a punchline for the past couple of seasons, especially with what happened in Detroit. He just started shooting a ton of jumpers, and especially threes. And 
it was actually funny to see him. He had three huge threes at, at, oh, down the stretch in this game. four for seven in the right. fourth quarter for 14 of his 19 points in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that he, is huge. Mm-hmm. And if I'm if I'm the Clippers, I'm just going to let him shoot as much as he wants in, in game seven because I don't think he's going to repeat this. Well, your MVP runner-up wasn't doing a whole heck of a lot. Yeah, he... <laughs> I think he he was sick or something. Had like the flu, maybe. Uh, that takes a lot for Kevin McHale to not put him back in. Yeah, and I I totally liked it because when Harden comes in, he is the center of that offense. Like the whole offense. Oh, absolutely. Him. Every possession is him, you know, winding down the clock and then trying to get a foul. And without him, it was it was flowing more. They were just running up and down the court. Josh Smith, like we can't say enough about him. He was incredible. I think an interesting stat is that. In that fourth quarter run, um, again, James Harden did not play in the fourth quarter. Yep. But also Dwight Howard, he had one free throw and no field goals. So, yeah. So Corey Brewer and <laughs> Josh Smith, just shout out to you guys. Yeah. Unbelievable. And you got to yeah. hand it out to Kevin McHale, too. They were going back and forth between the huddle. They had the microphone in there. He, at one point, like you said earlier today, he just said, uh, just go out there and have fun. And I'm just actually, I'm just a firm believer of when you're going out playing like a street ball, uh, pond hockey type mentality, you're just going to go out and you're going to do good things. Like that's what my dad told me growing up playing hockey. And it's, it's so true to some point. And right. Especially cause they had nothing to lose in that fourth quarter. Exactly. So they, yeah, they could have bombed, but they came out and they made up the huge deficit. Now they're still alive and they got a game seven at home. So, good for them. They were shooting 19.4% off jump shots in the first three quarters, yeah. uh, which was 7 of 36. Uh, that tallied 20 points. In the fourth quarter, 63.6%. 7 of 11 shooting off jump shots yeah. for 20 points. They just That's incredible. Hot. They just got hot. And their defense was incredible, too. Like They, they locked down. Yeah. And I think it was partly the Clippers, though, because they pretty, they pretty much played right into the Rockets' hands. It was a sl- They were playing really slowly. And all it was was CP3 and Blake Griffin pick and rolls with three guys just standing and watching. So I, it was it was really terrible offense for them, but also great defense for Houston. You got to credit them. From, um, from a Clippers team that was uh, on fire in the third quarter, Blake Griffin and Chris Paul were seven for seven combined with eighteen points in the third quarter. For them and the rest of the team in the fourth quarter to not really even. Look like they want to shoot the ball. I have never seen that from from a team yeah. that had been playing so well mm-hmm. for so long. And I, I mean, Chris Paul and Blake Griffin. You don't see that from those guys. They right. were just they were playing pa- pass back and forth. Yeah, hot potato. It seemed like they were they weren't even playing to win. They were just playing not to lose. And it's like the Clippers are cursed or something because they've never made the conference finals and they were twelve minutes away from making it here mm-hmm. and then they just choked. So. It really sucks for the Clippers fans, but it's also awesome for the Rockets because that was a great game. I mean, this this stat will just go to show you how fire the Rockets were in the fourth quarter last night. Um, they were 6 of 21 in the first three quarters for, from the three, and then 7 of 11 in the fourth quarter, thanks to Corey Brewer and um, Jay Smoove. Yep. With Corey Brewer's 21 minutes on the floor, the Rockets actually outscored the Clippers by 20 points. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That whole unit there at the end, it was Terry, Brewer, Josh Smith, Dwight, and then um, Ariza, I think. And they just, all those guys were huge pluses in this game. And all those guys can shoot the three ball, too, mm-hmm. which is yeah. deadly. I, I think the best part of last night was when Jason Terry hit that last three-pointer with 11 seconds left <laughs> from like six feet behind the three-point line with just, the shot clock winding down. Nothing nothing was going to miss for those guys. <laughs> oh, my Lord. So, who you got in game seven? Oh, it's such a hard question because I want the Clippers to make the I wanted the Clippers to make the NBA Finals before this game. Okay. But with that performance last night, like I'm rooting for Houston to pull it off, but I don't think Houston could match up against the LeBron James Cavaliers, even though they yeah. are kind of beaten up right now. Uh-huh. And I think I'm gonna go with the Clippers. I want the Clippers to win, and I think that they're gonna win in Game Seven because they're gonna play Golden State a lot better. Yeah. If, if Golden State does go on to win, and I think if they go on to the finals, they will play LeBron James and his Cavaliers yeah, I, pretty well. I'm also going to go with the Clippers, which is kind of surprising that both of us like them. I think the Rockets will probably be favored at home, but I think I think we're going to see a huge game from CB2 oh, and Blake, yeah. especially after they choked in the fourth. They're just going to come back and rebound. 
Um, so I'm really looking forward to that game, though. Because the Rockets, you could say, have the momentum now after that fourth quarter. Absolutely. I mean, you got home home crowd. And... Yep. Do you think What's James it? Harden comes off the bench? <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> he just asked me that, folks. Uh, no, he'll be. No, he'll, he'll be yeah. fine. For people who are saying the Rockets would be better without James Harden, you can, you can sit you, down. Yeah, <laughs> please don't say anything like that. Yeah, that's you. ridiculous. Uh, the Cavs are going on to the Eastern Conference Finals, which will be LeBron James' fifth straight year. Yeah, uh, in a conference final, he's chasing Chauncey Billups' <laughs> seven-year uh, yeah. record with the Pistons. But yeah, LeBron James, sustained success. That dude is amazing. I was uh, I was listening to Mike and Mike this morning on my way in here. Yeah, and they were saying I don't. Know, they were talking about. I feel like LeBron kind of gets a bad rap after a game when he only scores like 15 points, and I don't think that's fair because LeBron James is the best player in the league. And if he is not scoring, he's going to be the best player in the league some other way, right. if not if it's facilitating or defensively. He's and that's what he did last night. I think he had nine assists. Exactly. Runs, and uh, he, he makes his teammates so much better. All, a bunch of role players played amazingly well for the Cavs in that game six. Del Vadova led them in scoring. Tristan wow. Thompson. Yeah. Tristan Thompson. I actually texted you guys during this game. I said, I think I'm in love with Tristan Thompson. <laughs> yeah. I love him too much because... He, his effort is incredible, and he's pretty much outplayed the entire Bulls front court this series, and they have Pau Gasol, Joe Kim Noah, I know they're both banged up, but still, and also Miritich and Tosh Gibson, and Thompson has played all, has outplayed all of them combined, and I, that's just crazy, because I did not foresee that coming into the series, and Mozgov's been great, too. Yeah, he's, God, he's just done wonders, Mozgov. Yeah. Um, I think the Bulls, they didn't quit, I know that the... I know that Jalen Rose on ESPN was kind of talking about the word quit yeah. with these series. I don't think the Bulls quit. I just think they didn't play as smart as they could. Mm-hmm. You know, Taj Gibson playing dumb, kicking Della Vadova when he's down. Uh, Miritich <laughs> he, has a temper. Yeah, you just can't afford to play that way in an Eastern Conference semifinal when you're down 3-2 to two in the series. Yeah. And, I mean, God bless Derrick Rose for not getting injured in these congratulations uh, like i love to see it i hope he doesn't ever get injured again um i thought he played a great series hats off to him but at the end of the day everyone knew it wasn't going to be enough for lebron james's cavaliers because he just wasn't going to allow it yeah there's no way he would allow it you know when kevin love got injured and wasn't going to play for this series a lot of people said oh they don't have kevin love they might lose i was thinking you know they still do have LeBron James, yeah. the guy makes it to the conference finals every season. He owns the Bulls, and he wasn't going to let them lose this series. The Bulls were uh, actually 0, 0 for 11 coming into uh, the game when down 3-2 in a series. Really? So, I mean, sure, you could be superstitious, but you're playing <laughs> LeBron James. Yeah, it's, it's LeBron. If they hadn't won game six, they would have won game seven. Um, I You mentioned Derrick Rose, though. I feel so good for that guy. Absolutely. Because... No one was really talking about him at all coming into the playoffs, and then he just lit the world on fire pretty much and played extremely well, surprised everybody. Uh, he and Jimmy Butler form a really nice a really nice backcourt, probably second or third best in the league, I think. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see what happens in Chicago in the future. A lot of people will think Tom Thibodeau is going to get fired. That's just because he's had some disagreements with the front office. I don't think he should be fired. He's a great coach, but if he does, then... He's welcome in Minnesota. He is, he is definitely <laughs> welcome here. Um, and OKC in New Orleans, too, would probably love to have him. No, absolutely. Well, OKC just got Billy Donovan. Oh, yeah, you're right. My bad. New Orleans so, would like New Orleans would. I think it would be a good fit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's always fun to watch two MVPs go back and forth and Rosen. I don't know. LeBron. Yeah. LeBron always gets the last laugh, though. No, always. Poor guy, <laughs> Derrick Rose. I mean, that shot he had, uh, what was that, game two? With the uh, buzzer beater? I think it was game three at home. That, it was fun show, but, you know, it wasn't – LeBron James isn't going to yeah. let anything crazy happen. And he, mm-hmm. he responded, anything you can do, I can do better. Yeah. And he, he didn't need the backboard. <laughs> no, exactly. Like Paul Pierce and D. Rose. That was, that was a fadeaway off the baseline. That was impressive. That was an amazing shot. Oh, my Lord. Thank God David Blatt didn't screw it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because Blatt drew something up. And LeBron was like, no, screw this. 
just give me the ball. Yeah. I love to hear that. Well, Absolutely I, love, I love to, hear, to that. hear that, but I don't like LeBron coming out and saying that. No, that I, I agree. I, he shouldn't publicly say I that. I don't see why he needs to throw his coach under the bus. There's no need for that. No. Um, you know, Blatt's already been on the bad side of the publicity <laughs> this year enough, yeah. so uh-huh. he should he should kind of rethink his words yeah. and stuff. Um, Golden State and Memphis, game six tonight. Who do you have? It's a tough game to call. Uh, I think a lot of people think Memphis just because they're at home. But, but been, Golden State wants to end it. Right, I've been riding the Warriors all season, and I'll, I'll pick them to finish it tonight. They've been so hot the past two games, so give me Golden State. I'm going to agree with that. I will take Golden State tonight. Awesome. And then Hawks and uh, the yes. Wizards uh, broke my heart, Al Horford. <laughs> Al Horford played so well. It was a great game by him. I On just, both ends. I don't know. Paul Pierce with his late game magic once again. <laughs> After oh. he hit that shot, did you hear he turned to the Hawks bench and said series? No, he did not. He said series was over. And no. Al Horford comes in, no. and just out muscles Dene for the rebound. Uh, <laughs> I think the Wizards will win Game Six, but then we'll see what happens. Again. Where is that game? That's in, That's Washington, in Washington, right? Yeah. All right. Um, any update on John Wall? Is he playing or not? He. Randy Women said most likely. I think. But still, though, you never know with that hand. I think I think they should dress him, for sure. Mm-hmm. And if they get down into a situation like down ten points or something like that, then you could put him in. Well, the thing is, though, he looked so good in Game Five and was really surprisingly effective. He's got five broken bones in his hand, and he yeah, still played super well. Now, was that his shooting hand? Isn't he a lefty? Or is he? No, not he's a, a he's a righty. Okay. He dunks left-handed though. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think he'll play and probably play pretty well, and the Wizards win. But then. I just want to see more basketball, so please. <laughs> please, more Game 7s. Yeah, more Game 7s. Oh, my Lord. Okay. All right. Uh, NHL, we're going to come into the conference playoffs here. Who do you guys like in those series? Um, I like Chicago over the Ducks in five games. I want the Ducks to win. Everyone wants the Ducks to I, win. I but. want the Ducks to win, but I think Chicago's got to be the best team in the league right now. I'll go Chicago in six. I'm pulling for you, Ducks, though. I'm hoping you win it. Um, I'll take Chicago in six as well. And then Rangers and Lightning. I'm rolling with the Lightning. They are playing so hot right now. Um, Holtby. Or no, not Holtby. Holtby. That's Washington. Ben Bishop. Uh, Ben Bishop is an outstanding goaltender and playing out of his mind right now. And I think if Ryan Callahan comes back after his... Yeah, did you hear about that? Attendecomy. Emergency. Comes mm-hmm. back is he pra- playing? Comes back and practices four days later. That's <laughs> impressive. I thought and I read he'll that. he'll want to get back, I think, I believe, at the New York Rangers for trading him for St. Louis last year. But St. Louis might want to get back. No, because St. Louis wanted to leave the Lightning and play for uh, original 16. Okay. He always wanted to. And okay. so he knew he was trade bait that year. Okay. Callahan got out of nowhere. It's yeah. all the dirt. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to go Lightning because I wanted the Capitals to win Rangers. The Rangers series. So I'm going to go. nice logic. <laughs> oh. Nice from our NHL inside. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want. I still think the Lightning will win. I think that uh, Ben Bishop has been standing on his head and it's been amazing. Yeah. I like... Steven Samkos is more of the elite goal scorer if he can pick it up. Yeah, he's he's he Ty- been injured or something. I don't know what it is. And then Tyler Johnson is just amazing as a sophomore. I yeah. think he's a sophomore right this year. So I'm going Lightning and uh, Chicago, but I want the Ducks to be in there. I will I will take the Rangers over the Lightning just because I'll throw in with King Henrik when he's hot like he is right now. Mm-hmm. So Rangers in seven, I guess. I'll go six. I'll go Lightning in seven. I would hate to see a Rangers Blackhawks finals, but I think that yeah. that's that might be what we're in for. I think it's if you were to put money down on anyone, it would be the Blackhawks. Take that advice, listeners. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no one's beating them. Mm-mm. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Drew, Kyle. Thanks. Until next time. Thanks, man. Bye.